Coming up on Retiring Well with Michael Reese. All I'm trying to share with you is you need to know what your safe options are. You need to know where you can get decent interest rates on your money. CDs, paying pretty much nothing these days. Floating rate options, they're paying a little bit better. Educate yourself, learn about these things. Well, think about what happens when you leave your surviving spouse a big IRA. You have just left an account that at where every distribution is taxable, big old taxable liability in, a, in essence, to someone who is going to become a single taxpayer, someone whose tax rates are going to go through the roof. That's a great idea. Let's leave a big old taxable account to someone who's going to suddenly pay a bunch of taxes. Good job. No, leave her life insurance. It's tax-free. Way better deal. Now, the host of Retiring Well, Michael Reese. Welcome to the show today. We have 30 minutes of action-packed information specifically designed for you. Retiring Well starts right here, right now. Retiring Well with Michael Reese. Helping you make smart decisions with your money so you can live a better life. Today is the day you can take back control of your money. Retiring Well with Michael Reese, where we believe your best is yet to come. Hi, this week in CFP Talk, we are looking at the difference between CDs and things called floating rate instruments. Now, the reason we're looking at this is, as you know, interest rates are really, really low. In a very low interest rate environment, things like CDs, traditional options for your safe money, they're just not paying what they used to pay. And that has a real negative effect on you know, how your money works for you. We want to make sure that every part of your portfolio is working as hard as possible for your retirement. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening with CDs in today's environment. Now, as I'm recording this, I went on uh, bankrate.com and they told me that uh, national average, or maybe even it's the best CDs out there, I'm not 100% certain with bank rate sometimes, but generally speaking, they're saying a five-year CD is paying right around 1.5% a year. Now, what does that really mean to you? What does that mean? Well, here's what it means. Let's imagine that you put $100,000 of your savings into a five-year CD at 1.5%. What that means is every year, they're going to pay you $1,500 of interest. So $1,500 is credited to your account. If we do some simple math and you know, ignoring uh, compounding over five years, it's not a major issue. Uh, but $1,500 a year, you get it for five years. They're essentially saying, you let us use your $100,000 for the next five years. And at the end of the five years, we'll give you back maybe $7,500. Now, for a lot of you, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, gosh darn it. Um, you know, it seems all right, but on hundred grand over five years, why would I tie my money up for that? I mean, it just doesn't seem to make sense. So how can we do better? What can you do to improve on these numbers? Well, I want to introduce you to something called floating rate instruments. These are normally issued by insurance companies. Uh, you could go to an insurance company, get a floating rate, uh, they would call it an annuity, and for five years, they would tell you, we will pay you not 1.5% a year, we'll pay you 2% a year. Well, that's not very exciting. It's not very, um, wow, that's, you know, that's super awesome or anything like that. But then they have a little twist. And what they do is, we'll pay you that 2% plus, plus something called LIBOR. LIBOR. Those are, that is basically international lending rates. Now, what that means is this. If in LIBOR today, as I'm recording this, is about 0.8%. So that means in the first year, these 
types of instruments, they would pay you 2 plus 0.8. They're going to pay you 2.8% in the first year. What do they do next year? They say, well, we're going to pay you the 2 again plus whatever LIBOR is next year. So here's the thing. Let's imagine you think interest rates are going to rise. If interest rates rise, that guy rises. That number gets bigger which means this number gets bigger each year over those five years. For the sake of illustration, let's imagine that on average, you get about three over the five-year period. Let's imagine that. Well, on 100,000, the same 100,000, that leads to $3,000 every year. And over five years, that leads to 15,000 total. Now, are interest rate movements in the future guaranteed? Of course not. That number could go higher, it could go lower. Uh, hey, are you gonna get 2%? You know, it's 2% today when I'm recording this, but those numbers change. It might be higher or lower in the future. All I'm trying to share with you is, you need to know what your safe options are. You need to know where you can get decent interest rates on your money. CDs? paying pretty much nothing these days. Floating rate options, they're paying a little bit better. Educate yourself, learn about these things. Folks, if you have any questions about this or anything else we talk about in the show, please feel free to give us a call. The number's right there on the screen. Since 2000, we have seen the market drop to half its value a couple of times. We are now in the second largest bull run of all time. Is the bear po poised to strike again? Many are speculating that it is, but we are not going to take that position. The truth is no one can predict when because they always come unexpected. The key is being positioned to handle it no matter what happens. By objective, a mutual fund will hold the securities it said that they would hold in the prospectus. For example, a large cap mutual fund is going to hold large company stocks. If the market crashes like it did in 2008, then what does that large cap mutual fund do? Think about it. Will they go to cash? You will be hard pressed to find a large cap mutual fund that did not go right down with the market. Don't be caught being passively invested like that. What you want is active management. You want someone managing the downside as well as the upside. Also, don't get caught in the buy and hold trap. You have to remember that in 2008, when the market crashed, it started in December of 2007 and ended in March of 2009. Think about it. That was a 15-month period. Every month, people were getting their statements, and they would ask their advisor what they should do. And what was the mantra? Just hold. It'll, it always comes back. Sure it did, almost four years after it hit its bottom. We think that is unacceptable. It is also critical to understand what you are paying in fees. It continues to amaze us how little people understand what they are paying. There are only two ways to grow a portfolio. One is by the interest and dividends being earned by the underlying securities, or what we call yield. And two, by appreciation, the idea that a security will grow in value. If I'm trying to grow to get a six or 7% return, and I'm only getting 2% in yield, and I'm paying fees of more than that, then my whole portfolio is relying on speculation. That's where you get volatility. We have all been taught you can't have great reward without taking great risk. It is not true. You can achieve market-like returns without volatility. We have the tools today to show you how much risk you are taking. We have the tools today to show you how much you are paying in fees. Don't you think you have the right to know? To the first 10 callers, we will perform a risk and fee analysis for you absolutely free. If you had a life-threatening illness and the doctor was prescribing a critical procedure, well, wouldn't you find it appropriate to get a second opinion? You have saved retirement your whole life. Don't you think your life savings deserves a second opinion as well? Again, for the first 10 callers, we will do the risk and fee analysis and we'll show you how, how to avoid being just passively invested. Give us a call.
All right, this week in our segment of Ask Banks, uh, we actually have a question that came in from uh, one of the viewers here. Uh, and it's from, from, I remember her name was Sherry. She was asking the following question. She was saying, hey, Banks, Banks, hey, Banks. Yeah, well, Banks pays attention to Sherry about as well as me, as you can see. Anyway, Sherry was asking the question. She said uh, that she'd been watching the show and, you know, on this show, we talk about uh, converting to Roth IRA because we love Roth IRAs. They're tax-free, right, Banks? Tax-free, we love that. Oh, yeah, those are good things. Um, and we talk about we want to convert or have a plan to convert IRAs to Roth IRAs uh, if it makes sense for your planning. So um, Sherry wrote in. She said, she, she, and you can, if you have a question, you can ask Banks. I think it's askbanks at retiringwell.com, I believe. Anyway, um, she asked a question. She said, hey, Banks, um, uh, I'm, she's in a 401k now. And she said, I'm in a 401k. Uh, I, and she was watching the show about converting to Roth IRAs. Uh, she's still working. Can she convert her 401k to an IRA, a Roth IRA even though she's still working? And, you know, that's a really good question. Banks, what do you think about that? You want to answer Sherry for us? Uh, Banks looks like she's doing about the same thing she normally does, which is just lays around and uh, looks good. Okay, good. Banks. So anyway, <laughs> when it comes to, oh my gosh, look at this. What a ham. When it comes to your 401k, Sherry, um, you, here, is, here is something kind of interesting. If, right, if your 401k has a Roth um, option. So uh, some 401ks, in fact, a lot of 401ks have the ability to have a Roth option in, inside of your account. If your 401k, if your company provides one that has that Roth option, you can, right, Banks? I know you're excited about this. You can convert uh, within your 401k, your, the, the dollars that are any, any portion or the whole amount, Dollars that are in the traditional account, you can convert to the Roth side. Now, you will pay tax, of course, in the amount that you convert. So if you have, you know, 100000 that you convert, you're going to pay tax on 100000 of income. So remember that. Now, one thing that is different with Roth conversions inside of a 401k is that um, a Roth conversion inside of a 401k you cannot change your mind. So with a regular IRA, if you go IRA to Roth uh, IRA, you have a period of time where you can change your mind and go back, uh, but not inside of the 401k structure. You make that change in the 401k, it is done. You cannot change your mind uh, after that. So it's irrevocable is the term. Um, now the other thing you can think about, Sherry, is you said you're still working. If this is the 401k that you're um, at a job you're at, you know, your options may be limited. Um, what you might need to do, if you're over the age of 59 and a half, you might be able to do an in-service rollover. And that just means you can take money, even though you're still working, from your 401k and move it over to your IRA. And, wow, that's, that's cool. Now, uh, poor Banks, she's, I've lost her here. Um, but anyway, you can go from 401k to IRA, and when that happens, you can then do the typical Roth conversion process. Um, but what if you're still working, you're under the age of 59 and a half? See, I don't know your circumstances. Um, but if you are too young, um, then you're kind of stuck. You kind of have to wait until you either A, get a new job and move away from that company, or B, hit the age of 59 and a half. Now, you didn't say this, but you, if that 401k is, say, from an old job or something where... You, know, you don't work there anymore, well, then it's easy. Then you just go from 401k to IRA, and off you go. You can do all kinds of cool stuff there. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, I didn't have a quick answer, and banks didn't have a quick answer for you. Uh, but what it comes down to is simply this. If you can do something, that's great. Uh, I always encourage you, talk to a professional before you take any action. Talk to someone. Uh, look, call our office, Sherry. Well, we're happy to sit down with you and help you analyze uh, what you're doing there to make sure you're making smart choices. And, you know, folks, for all of you watching the show, uh, if you have questions about Roth conversions and 401ks and IRAs, I want you to call us. Give us a call. Uh, we are here to answer your questions.
Your grandchildren are precious to you. They are your life. This is your time to have that special relationship. Taking care of yourself is taking care of them. Centennial Wealth Advisory is offering a free, no-obligation retirement review to make sure you don't run out of money during your retirement. Centennial Wealth Advisory. Your best is yet to come. Centennial Wealth Advisory, your independent retirement planning specialists, now in three convenient locations in Northern Michigan. 818 Red Drive in Traverse City, 3890 Charlevoix Avenue in Petoskey, and 3687 Old 27 South in Gaylord. Contact us at 888-608-5825 or visit send-wealth.com to schedule your no-obligation complete retirement review at any of our Northern Michigan locations, Traverse City, Petoskey, or Gaylord. Centennial Wealth Advisory, your best is yet to come. Essential Financial Strategies for a Comfortable Retirement. Join the Centennial Wealth Advisory team for an informative and exciting presentation with complimentary gourmet dinner and learn how to protect your assets from market volatility, how to plan your retirement, the best ways to generate lifetime income, how to safeguard your assets from unnecessary taxation, the difference between retirement advisors and Wall Street advisors, why getting a second opinion may be your most important financial decision, and much more. Choose the date and location that works best for you. Wednesday, November 2nd at Otsego Club in Gaylord. Thursday, November 17th at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. Presentations start at 6 p.m. and are free to attend with a complimentary gourmet dinner to follow. But seating is limited and fills quickly. Call 888-608-5825 or visit send-wealth.com to reserve your seats today. There's no cost and no obligation. Don't miss this important presentation, Essential Financial Strategies for a Comfortable Retirement. Call 888 888- 608-5825 today. All right, folks, this week I want to ask you the question, is your IRA, 401k, 403b, etc., are those traditional retirement accounts, are they really good accounts for retirement or are they maybe some of the Worst accounts you can have for retirement. Well, it kind of depends how you look at things, I guess. But what I want to share with you are from a tax perspective, I'm going to share with you four reasons. Four reasons that your IRA, your 401k, 403b, etc., are actually the worst accounts you can have as a retiree. All right? Four reasons. Ready? Here we go. Reason number one. Reason number one. Every time you pull money out of that IRA, You know this, you pay tax. What rate do you pay tax at? Your effective rate? No, you pay tax at whatever your highest marginal rate is. So whatever your rate is, whatever your mark, if you're in the 15% tax bracket, every dollar comes out at 15. If you're at 25, every dollar comes out at 25. Whatever your highest tax bracket is, that's the tax you pay as the money comes out. Okay, reason number two. Reason number two is simply this. I call it double taxation. Now, what do I mean? When you pull money out of your IRA, that goes on the front page of your tax turn, on the front page of your tax return, rather, as an entry. It's an income entry on that return. As a result, it affects, in many cases, the amount of tax you pay on your Social Security. So what happens is, here's the net effect. Not only do you pay tax on the money uh, that comes out of your IRA, that same distribution in many cases forces you to pay more tax on your Social Security than you otherwise would have to pay. So you're hit twice uh, with taxes on the same distribution. All right, let's go to number three. Do you know that your retirement plan, IRA, 401, K, 403B, et cetera. Do you know that that is the only type of account, the 
only type of account that forces you to pull money out once you hit the age of 70 and a half. You've got to pull money out every year, even if you don't want to. If you want to pull it or not, doesn't matter. You're forced to pull a certain amount out every single year starting at age 70 and a half, the year in which you turn 70 and a half, and then every year thereafter for the rest of your life, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger every single year. It's very annoying to people who are in that time of their lives. I can promise you that. And let's go to reason number four. Guys, I know that you, you're thinking, in the back of your mind anyway, you're thinking, you're probably going to die before your wife does. Right? You probably are. And I know that you want to make sure that she is financially secure for the rest of her life. So if your wife lives longer than you, you want her to be secure. My wife, Becky, she's six years younger than me, seven years younger than me, depending on the date. But she's a few years younger. I'm probably going to go first. Well, I don't want to leave her destitute. I want to make sure she's in good shape. Well, think about this. Let's imagine you have a big IRA or 401k. You got half a million dollars, a million dollars in one of these things, and you're thinking, she's going to be set. Well, think about what happens when you leave your surviving spouse a big IRA. You have just left an account that at where every distribution is taxable, big old taxable liability in, a, in essence, to someone who is going to become a single taxpayer, someone whose tax rates are going to go through the roof. That's a great idea. Let's leave a big old taxable account to someone who's going to suddenly pay a bunch of taxes. Good job. No, leave her life insurance. It's tax-free. Way better deal. So here you go. Four reasons that, from a tax perspective, IRAs and their kin are not so great. Right? Remember what they were. Every distribution is taxable. It double taxed a lot of times because it affects Social Security, only account you're forced to pull money out of, and really worst type of account you can leave to a surviving spouse. All right. What should you do? I want you to think about Roth conversions. They could be really helpful. Now, if you have any questions about what we talked about here, I want you to just pick up the phone, call us. We'd love to help you out. Essential financial strategies for a comfortable retirement. Join the Centennial Wealth Advisory team for an informative and exciting presentation with complimentary gourmet dinner and learn how to protect your assets from market volatility, how to plan your retirement, the best ways to generate lifetime income, how to safeguard your assets from unnecessary taxation, the difference between retirement advisors and Wall Street advisors. Why getting a second opinion may be your most important financial decision and much more. Choose the date and location that works best for you. Wednesday, November 2nd at Otsego Club in Gaylord. Thursday, November 17th at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. Presentations start at 6 p.m. and are free to attend with a complimentary gourmet dinner to follow. But seating is limited and fills quickly. Call 888-608-5825 or visit send-wealth.com to reserve your seats today. There's no cost and no obligation. Don't miss this important presentation, Essential Financial Strategies for a Comfortable Retirement. Call 888 608 5825 today. Welcome to Coffee Talk. We're looking forward to answering some different questions that you, the viewers, have sent in today. And there are a number of common questions that we hear from folks all the time. So my name is John Torbett. I'm one of the financial advisors here with Centennial Wealth Advisory, and this is my colleague, Larry Flynn. So we'll get started here. Larry, first question. Okay. I keep hearing people talk about IRAs being tax time bombs. What are they talking about? Well, John, it, you know, we all bought on into this concept, right, when we were putting into 401ks and IRAs that in our working years, we were going to be at a high tax bracket, sure. right? And then when we got to retirement, we were going to be in a lower bracket, and that makes sense, right? I'm going to save at this rate and pay at this rate. 
But you know and I know that probably 90% of the people we work with that are getting are soon to be retired or retired are literally living the same lifestyle, staying in the same tax bracket. So honestly, probably all we did is kick the can down the road, right? Right. But what people don't recognize is, and they might be okay with that, what they don't recognize is in a surviving spouse situation, sometimes that tax rate can be even higher. Mm -hmm. And where they saved at this rate, they might even be paying at a much higher rate um, for that surviving spouse. And that's one thing that they, they're usually very surprised about. Yeah, and something else too, Larry, is, is for the younger viewers out there or maybe for their kids to think about the Roth IRAs that weren't always available, um, but some people have been taking advantage of to have that money over in a Roth where now it's tax-free when that's they right. want to take distribution. That's so right. it's a valuable tool. That's right. Um, here's a question okay. for you, John, All right. Um, from when it came in. Um, it says, I'm retiring in a few weeks and I'm thinking of cashing out my old insurance policies. My house is paid off, the kids are gone, and I don't see any need for coverage anymore. Is there anything I'm missing here? This, this is one that comes up quite a bit, and, and the concern there is that it seems like people are always cashing out life insurance right at that time where they're getting closer to death. And that's sort of the purpose of life insurance. Now you think of it as in your younger years like mine where you have a young family at home and you want to have a death benefit there to take care of the family. But with the type of planning we're looking at is more from a tax perspective. That life insurance, if you're married, maybe at that married tax bracket, one spouse passes, now you go to that single tax bracket having that tax-free death benefit from life insurance can be a valuable tool. Yeah, I think, uh, John, don't you agree that a lot of people think, you know, in their early years they have life insurance more as a replacing income, you sure. know, for the bread winner. Sure. But as they get older and they accumulate some assets, they're thinking, hey, kids are gone, why do I need this anymore? Right. But it actually can be a very helpful tool in the estate planning, right, for IRA exit strategies and things, things of that nature. Yeah, the other thing that comes to mind with life insurance today is how we're sometimes utilizing it for clients for long-term care planning. The traditional long-term care planning can be very expensive, but the life insurance where you have this tax-free death benefit, but if you need it for long-term care, you can draw from that. So we're finding a lot of uh, life types of life insurance policies today where we're we're taking advantage sort of killing two birds with one stone so. it isn't funny how many people are shocked by that oh when, yeah when you tell them you know guess what with a lot of life insurance today you can use that death benefit for long-term yeah. care yeah. and they have no idea yeah, most people yeah. aren't aware of it yeah so. yeah well hey thanks for for tuning in to coffee talk with us and we look forward to uh talking with you again here real soon Thanks everyone for watching the show today. Now if you have any questions, feel free to call our office or visit our website. And remember, you only retire once. So let's get it right the first time. We'll see you next week.